my friends, welcome back. You are watching day three of our four day series focusing on the Wilderness Collection from Minte Paper. We're creating a beautiful accordion style album. And so if you are just getting started, you can check in the top of the description for links for the first two days. On the first day, you do get a little preview of the finished project so you can see what all of this assembling is going to lead up to in the end. And so for today, we're going to make a very easy flip book insert. And each one of these is going to take one full sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper. This is 65 pound weight. And so I am going to score this at five and a half on the long side. And then I'm gonna flip it and score it at four and a quarter. This is going to leave me with four quadrants that are just the same size as an A2 size card. So first thing I wanna do is come in and cut one of the sides from the short end to the middle. And that will be what we can use to fold over. And so of course I didn't bring my glasses down. I'm gonna get this as close as I can cutting very carefully on that line right to the center. Then I'll go ahead and fold this over in half so it has kind of a landscape profile. And then I'll fold the portions that are cut back on to the booklet. One on either side. Then I'm going to go ahead and use the bone folder to reinforce that crease because you want it to be nice and flat. So now what you've got is a booklet that will open here and then here as well. Want to add a layer of double-sided adhesive tape here to the middle to keep this portion adhered. Then I'll just go ahead and fold that closed to adhere those portions together. And this will be the second style of insert for our accordion album. So we're gonna go ahead and cover our folded inserts. And these have the same measurements as an A2 size card. So I'm gonna bring in my matting layer. And remember, this is only gonna be on the front cover to reduce a little bit of the bulk on the inside. This matting layer is five and three eighths by four and eight. And my pattern paper I'm bringing in is five and a quarter by four. Now this one is just a little shy because I used an off cut from another section. So I'm going to make up that difference with a layering strip of that pretty plaid. But normally if you were to cut the full size sheet, it would be five and a quarter by four. And that would cover that area, giving you an eighth of an inch border on your cardstock and then also on the base. And that is what you want. So for some of these images, I thought there was an opportunity to bring in some additional layering elements. So I brought in a die cut doily from that beautiful chocolate brown and I'm just going to top it with another layer of that background. And so this little circle cut will go right in there. And I'm gonna top it with another beautiful fox image. And I think this would be a beautiful place to add some writing and detail on your cover. So this is going to open left to right and we can put our pieces on the inside. Now remember when we're putting our pattern paper in Without the cardstock border, we're gonna use the cardstock border measurements. So these are gonna be the five and three eighths by four and eight, and that'll just give us the border of the base around. And I can go ahead and continue to use my layering strips to fill in all of that space. For this one, I have a beautiful mountain here, and that is definitely part of the vibe for this set of pages. And here's another piece of that plaid. So I've got the same look going across both pages. And here is a journal card, same as we did on the file folder insert. 
and I'm just going to add that here and top it with a few of the ephemera pieces that I fussy cut from the full size sheet. And then go ahead and work on the next set. Here is a large background image and I'm pairing it with the plaid on this page because I want to include another one of the journal cards and another ephemera piece. And I really want to make sure there's lots of opportunities to include writing. And that is most important when your memory keeping is to include all of the memories that go with your pictures. Here is a little bear to go on the scene and then I'll just go ahead and finish the back with a nice large chunk of that plaid and remember there is plenty of room on the back of these inserts for more pictures so this is very chunky and thick and nice and sturdy and it just becomes a nice little folded insert so we'll tuck that in it goes in front of all of the file folder pockets and we'll have one for each compartment. Now, because we're making similar inserts for each compartment, this actually goes along pretty quickly because once you have your measurements ready for cutting your paper, you can just cut enough for all of the four for each section. So that will help this process go along a little bit faster. Here is our image for the front. It's absolutely beautiful with the guitar and the flowers and the lantern. Okay, here's our first two page layout. I'm going to go back to that combination with the beautiful white weathered wood grain because it's just such a nice neutral background. You can put anything on it. And remember that we are using the matting size for all the pattern paper that is on the inside. Here's another journal card, and that's going to be a repeating theme throughout because not only do I have enough from the collection to disperse these throughout the book and make it a great place for writing, but it also helps me to use up this collection. Remember, I am trying trying not to add to my stash. So if I can get through more of the collection by using all the back sides of the journal cards, I am definitely going to do that. Now here is a nice detail for this side to tie it in to the other, and that's just more of those dovetail banner pieces with the stitching. Now here's another two page layout for this booklet and I think it is really good to work through the collection and come up with different combinations. These all work really well together so you're going to be able to get a really nice variety that is similar but different. So it looks really well coordinated but each of these pages are not matchy matchy. You don't want the same thing over and over again. And just by swapping out these patterns, you're gonna be able to get a good different look for each set of pages. And so I'm just going to go ahead and give this page its border to fill in the space. And then just for fun, I'll put my journal card on this side and top it with this tent image. And then finish the back with more of that beautiful green plaid and tuck it into the second pocket from the back. And we'll just keep working our way forward. Okay, so we're moving right along to our third booklet style insert. And I'm just gonna continue to add all of these paper layers as I have been. This image was too beautiful to cover with any layering bits, so I just left it as it is. And there's still room on here to add some journaling if you want to include some writing. For these two pages, I do not have a lot of layering going on because this pattern was a little bit larger and so I didn't want to lose as much of it behind the journal card and then a potential picture that you would put on here. So I don't have border strips or any of that because I didn't want to lose so much of this image. So here is 
with this set of pages and it looks a little bit simple but I didn't want to lose all that pattern. So for the next set of pages I do have layering and that is because once again I need to combine some patterns to fill in the space. So I'm going to make these two page layouts the same and then add my beautiful wood grain here on the bottom giving me my 1 8 of an inch border and this set of pages is going to get the ephemera pieces so I'm going to include my journal card here and then add this sweet little backpack then this sweet little lantern and then I'll add this white wolf to this side to complete that two-page layout. Here is more of the plaid to finish off the back and we tuck that into the second pocket and move on to the first. Okay here is our fourth and final folded booklet insert. We're going to add all the layers just as we have been working along. Here is another portion that I'm going to complete the pattern size by layering on a border strip. This one also gives me the opportunity to add another one of these sweet little doilies here. I'll top it with this watercolory pattern, sort of an impression that there's trees in the background, and put on this sweet little bear ephemera piece onto the front. So on this set of pages, I have to join these patterns once again, but I'm going to put it on the outside this time. So that gives me kind of a different look for this set of pages. And I'm just gonna put this plaid here to fill in the rest of that page size. And here is that sweet little camper again putting it toward the center and then finishing it with more of the plaid. This set of pages, I'm back to oh, that beautiful wood grain for both sides. Plaid border for the bottom. Here's my journal card. And another one of the cabins. So I'm choosing to put it on this bottom corner because the orientation goes inward. So that makes sense to me to work in a story here where the cabin is facing toward the layout. And here is the final back portion of our booklet style inserts. And we can put that into the very front pocket. And that will be all for day three. So I hope that you plan to join me tomorrow for day four. We're going to complete the last of the inserts and then cover the front and back of this beautiful folio album. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a comment and a big thumbs up. You can find links to all our social media sites in the description below. I hope you will consider subscribing to join our crafty little family. And as always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day. And I thank you so much for watching. Bye.